Hey guys, Zach here, and today we're talking about Lepic. Lepic's rise to fame was his ability to settle all of the early hard mode bosses in seconds with his fourth ability and his transcendent mod. Even normal Lepic could solo the bosses very easily with the right setup, but it did require a more filled out build. With the introduction to Gluttony, Lepic has fallen off a little bit due to his one-shot build mostly not having enough health or defense and spending most of his time on the floor, but with today's build, I'm showing proof of concept that Lepic is going to be just fine going forward with the Season 1 changes to Catalyst. So if Lepic is your favorite character, strap in and let's go over his builds so you can keep on blowing everything up. So in the clip at the beginning, you might have noticed that I didn't use any of Lepic's abilities other than his two. And that's because of this mod, Power Unit Change. This mod is available for both the normal and ultimate Lepic. So if you don't have ultimate Lepic, this build is still 100% viable. What this mod does is instead of boosting your ability damage, it boosts your weapon firearm attack by 52%. This stacked with shot focus and walk a tight rope boosts your firearm attack to 97% before adding another 26% damage from your annihilation set bonus. So you have 123% extra firearm attack from popping one ability and being under 50% health. So how do we set this up? Well, the first thing we want to do is get some hard hitting weapons and stack as much cooldown and duration as we can in the build and there are two ways we can do that so the first way that we can set this up is through our mods um, i did change one mod out in the video earlier instead of going with stim accelerant we switched to battle of stamina to get a little bit more duration out of this we are running two hp mods that's just so that we can survive uh one of the hits and get us to that low health if you saw in the video that i was hanging out 1 HP for a long uh, part of the fight, it's because I didn't want to get any more health so that I can keep the max power bonus going as long as possible. It is a risky playstyle, but once you know the boss's moves, it's not too hard to avoid them. Um, it does take doing the fight a few times. So if you're going down, I would switch back to your stim accelerant to give you that bigger health bonus until you learn how to do the fight. So with the amount of duration and cooldown we have stacked, we are at a 10 second cooldown and we are at a 9.6 second duration. Think about this the same way you would think about popping Glaze 3 ability. You just want as much uptime on this as possible by reducing cooldown and increasing duration. So the first thing we did for cooldown was we added MP conversion. This is gonna be the max cooldown that you can get um, at the 36.5%. The Max MP reduction doesn't really matter because we're only popping R2. And then we also went with focus on fire. We went with focus on fire, not because the skill power matters. It's just because of the polarities that we have set for our one shot build. There's not a lot of wiggle room that we have until season one drops and we can change some things around. Uh, so we did get a little bit more skill cooldown for this. You could fit in another uh, focus on mod to get a little bit more cooldown. If you want to re-level an increased HP, you can drop it literally by one or two uh, and be able to fit in another cooldown mod, which would be very beneficial. It's gonna make it so that your duration lasts longer than your cooldown. Um, I just don't have the gold to do that right now uh, because I've been working on a lot of builds. But what we did for duration was maximize duration. Once again, we're not worried about the skill power modifier. And then we also went with skill extension to get it all the way up to that 9.6 seconds. Um, the other way that we can increase these is of course using your reactor. I only have a gold skill cooldown mod for him at the moment. If I could get a skill cooldown with duration and then I, I wouldn't be worried about the mods as much. This would just be a very, very good and easy to use build so for our external component set we are going to be once again running the annihilation set uh, it is just the best bossing set in the game if you're using your weapons uh, it also has a lot of natural defense and max hp equipped we are going with the max mp and mp recovery boosts because we don't want to worry about having are two available to us. So even if you're attacking from the very start of the fight, you'll be recovering MP and being able to use that on cooldown. For weapons, we do go with Greg's Reverse Fate. And this, the whole reason we're going with this is because of how well the modifiers stack with the firearm damage. Um, I'm sure this isn't the best build that's available, but I really, really like this one on any of my gun descendants because of spray and play. Spray and pray. 
What this mod does is when you hit with a critical hit, your rounds are not consumed for three seconds. So you get the max amount of bullets out for your two timer. Uh, everything in here is stacked to increase uh, the modifier damage that we can and the actual damage of the firearm attack and then the fire rate up so that you're pumping out the damage. With this, you have a, a almost 30% firearm critical hit rate. The firearm critical hit damage is a four times multiplier and your weak point damage is a 3.5 times multiplier. This is just very good because it stacks, that damage still stacks with your bombardments. So if you're hitting for 300K on the boss, the bombardments are also gonna come down at 300K. If you can run with an Enzo, this build becomes even stronger with that crit critical hit rate boost and the damage boost that you get from him. Also at the beginning of the fights, I like to run with the afterglow sword. Um, I pretty much just unload as much ammo as I can in the start because once again, it has that really high firearm critical hit damage multiplier and that weak point damage multiplier, 5.3 time multiplier for that, and then a 3.5 multiplier for your crit with the 52% firearm attack boost, this is getting bumped up a lot before the fight even begins. If you do save your ammo for when you're low health, this of course is gonna get even higher and you're gonna have even bigger critical hits. So this is very good uh, to run. Like I said, running with an Enzo is just gonna be super beneficial for you because that critical hit damage is just gonna make everything scale really, really well. So for the Lepic one-shot build, there's been a ton of different takes on this. This is mine. This is very safe if you want to go into group play or if you want to just do it solo. Right now I have the solo mods equipped and we're just going to kind of go over that. Of course, you want to have your firearm master. This is going to give you that skill power boost for whenever you switch to your four ability. Pulling out that unique weapon does proc this and it's going to increase your skill power modifier by 39%. This does stack with a two, so the rotation is literally pop your two, pop your four, and then you'll get that big boost of damage. For our solo, we're gonna go with weighing the scales. This is gonna decrease the cost of our abilities, which is important. And then the rest we're gonna put into damage, whether it be skill critical damage, uh, skill power modifiers, fire skill power, dangerous ambush, because once you down him, you're gonna get a very easy 50% increase of damage and then MP Accelerant. We want a little bit of duration into the build so that we can get more of the fireballs out and then adding max MP is very important because if you run out of the MP, your ability will end early. We are using the Annihilator set with this. If you get a really good roll of the Slayer stuff, that is more damage, but it is more skill cost. I don't know if the trade-off is really worth it, so I just run Annihilator. Um, just to have that little bit of extra stuff. And I also have perfect rolls on these where I have the MP recovery out of combat. So if you're pre-shooting, it works really well. Um, and then you have your max MP, MP recovery in combat so that you are regening a little bit. And then the weapons that we do use for um, this is kind of important. So whenever we go to use our one-shot build, we do want to use a the Zester's Devotion is really good. Uh, you don't have to use that, but any slow firing impact weapon is gonna be what, what makes it really work well. All because of sharp precision shot. So it decreases your fire rate, but as long as you hold down the fire button, it's gonna increase your fire rate of your unique weapon as well, causing you to shoot the fireballs out very, very quickly. And we will show you a clip of that right now. Now, I know that didn't look super impressive because the boss didn't die before the ult ran out, but that's just how RNG works. I didn't want to fish for max crit runs on a boss that can be downed using just weapons in 10 seconds. That was just meant to be an example. Quick note, I did notice that both of Lepic's reactors are farmable this week. You can get the one for the gun build at the Corrupted Zone, and you can get the one for the one-shot build at the Fallen Theater this week. Um, I highly suggest farming for both of those. You can also grab 
um, a general rounds one from the storage this week. That would be for his mobbing build, which I'm about to go over. So now we're going to go over the Lepic mobbing build, which is some of the most fun I actually have on Lepic. I really enjoy the combat loop of gathering everything up with his three and then throwing grenades non-stop. We do have it set down to a 6.4 second cooldown for the gather and then a 1.5 second cooldown for the grenade. You can get this lower with the right reactor equipped, but we're going to kind of go over the build now. I like regenerative breaking for this because it's going to give you MP back just by using your abilities. And then we also run it with MP collector so that when you gather everything up and get the kills, you get a lot of that MP back. So it's a non-stop loop of just being able to throw their grenades. We do go with focus on tech and focus on fire for the skill damage, but mostly the cooldown. And then we also stack MP conversion and nimble fingers. You're not too worried about the MP loss because we do have two ways to get MP back outside of our external components which we'll go over in a second and then we stack max range so we have a really big gather range on our three and then a little bit of crit um, for skill insight you can swap out regenerative breaking for firearm master if you just still want to have that big uh, bursty ultimate damage or you can go with a increased efficiency so that you can use your ult non-stop or your four ability non-stop. Um, you do recover MP when the weapon lands a critical hit, so you could swap out one of your range mods for another skill critical hit rate mod. And then for your reactor, you of course want to get skill critical hit and then skill critical hit damage. We do have an HP mod here. If you find that you're not running in to uh, health problems, you're being downed all the time and being inconvenienced for your team, you can swap that out and just put in more crit damage or crit rate here um, but i like running around with a little bit more hp it's just how i like to play the game we do go with the slayer set so that we get that flat 26 percent increased damage um, at the cost of 15 percent skill cost but the way we have it set up we are constantly getting mana back and with our components we have mp recovery out of combat in combat and an mp recovery modifier so mana is not usually an issue Right now I have the skill critical hit uh, damage and skill critical rate, but you can swap that out for more cooldown and range if you like, so that you have more grenades and a larger range to pick up your enemies. And that's gonna be it for the video today. Kind of a long one, but we did have a lot to go over. So if you learned something new today, I would really appreciate it if you like the video it really helps out a small channel and if you're interested in other characters and their builds consider subscribing i'll be working on a viesa build for tomorrow so check that out too but if you made it this far thanks for giving me your time and i hope you have a great day peace